Hey guys, and welcome to the Igloo today, and today we're going to be talking about the new survival mode that we're going to be getting beta. So, one of the big things that everybody's going to be um, automatically saying is that, what do you do? Look, I have seven hours that I put into the survival mode today alone. If you want to see the live stream, go right for it. It'll be in the description. But here's the big thing that's going to be notified out of anything else. Are you going to fast travel to a train station? Don't. Okay, don't fast travel to a train station because if you get caught to the wrong train station, they're going to insta-kill you. There's no, there's no invulnerability. They literally changed zero input to what there was the difference between adventure mode and survival mode. So if you are going to fast travel, period, you're going to have a bad time. Especially if you go to the wrong train station at the wrong time. You're going to be insta-killed. Do not fast travel back to that same train station if you die there. Okay, wait, go a little bit farther, travel to a different location. Give me that Two, never travel to 76 at the very introductory beginning, where people think that they would be safe. I had one instance that happened to me when I was during the live stream, and I was killed by like 20 people. It, it was pretty bad. Okay, so just let you know, do not at all travel when you're not prepared. Anytime you take a fast travel, you take a risk. Same amount of people were on the server, which, again, to be fair, at this point, everybody's just going to be fighting around train stations. All of my fights, or a good majority of my fights, were at train stations because that's where all the PvP action was. At the same time, again, if people are stupid and then they fast travel to that same train station, just keep shooting them because there is no fast travel and vulnerability. This is an oversight on Bethesda's part, and it's not at all on the player's fault at all. Why would you want to have a fair fight when you can literally farm the same person for 3,000 caps? It makes no honest sense, and then you can just pick up all their scrap, all their aid, and everything else because they want to keep being frustrated and teleporting to the same spot. Now, I can understand if there was, let's say, seven, eight different spots that you could fast travel to at each train station. But that's not the case. It's the same spots as what they had prior in Adventure Mode, which means do not fast travel if you got killed to that spot, you will have a bad time. You might want to get your gear back, but at the same time, you're going to get killed. I got in over probably about 9,000, probably a little bit closer to 10,000 now at this point because I've been playing a little bit more off stream when I came to this. But again, do not. Okay, any events that is pretty good. Like, let's say you're trying to take over a nuclear facility or something like that. You will be shown as friendly. So the only times that you will have ceasefires are in event zones that cause you to play together. So any kind of enclave event, any kind of uh, Brotherhood of Steel event, anything that is a event is a safe zone for a player, okay, for that short period of time. But the minute that that is completed, it's the freaking Alamo and everybody's shooting each other all over the place. You will not survive in the main majority of the sense as the average player. You might need to have something completely a little bit different when it comes to most of this retrospect. Again, I did about seven hours of this. Pretty much most of this was solo except for at the end with Doc and a few other of his friends. So we're going to get into it for the best weapons that you're going to be needing for this. So my... Invisible melee build that I put out in video form, yeah, that's pretty much viable. When it comes to, let's say, a shotgun, any kind of thing that adds a multiplicative factor when it comes to it, when it comes to pellets or anything in that kind of retrospect, take it, use it, make sure you abuse it because that's literally what you have. I have a bloodied explosive combat shotgun, I have a quad explosive harpoon. And I have an anti-armor Deathclaw Gauntlet that I was using throughout most of this majority of the fight. Now, I know that there's also some pure builds that are in this mode. If you're doing this to level up, don't, okay? You will have a bad time. You not only will be playing on hardcore mode the whole time, but all it takes is one person with a crazy nitty build like myself, Doc, or a few other people that play this game that have decked out to the nine explosive weapons... And they won't help you. You will die instantly. Do not level up here. It's going to be a bad time for you. I guarantee it. Because I've done that to so many times. One, so let's say, for example, you're the longest person living to be alive, right? 
and you are level one to two, you will die. You will die even if you're below level five from anybody on the server. Don't do it, okay? If you are in, let's say you're leveling up and you are the longest person living alive and you are number one on the leaderboard, you are being shown to every other person on the server, hey, look at me, come kill me. Do not do it. Do not be that player that's not max level with some gear to at least defend yourself in that regard. Because as soon as you have your weapon out, as soon as you have anything like that and you are not invisible, you are dead. You will die if you do not have this weapon mode. You will make sure for that. Now again, this mode is not for the faint of heart. You can come on to this, you can do the Scorch Beast Queen, you can do everything you want. Everything that you have in Adventure Mode is on the PvP servers. I also encountered during my live streams that I was getting ganked inside the silo. First time, yeah, it's fine. I, I'm okay with it. Second time, when I was in, going into the silo, he was still hitting me in the regard of actually, as soon as I went down the elevator shaft, I was being meleeed. So that whole animation time, yeah, I died. I died again. And then I died. So I died, yeah, I died like a handful of times, but at the same time, I had surplus. At the end of everything, like I said, I got 9,000 caps. I got so many different, like, aid items and everything else. Yeah, I lost some stim packs and a few other things, but that didn't matter. You know what I was collecting? Ballistic fiber so that I can continue repairing my armor and everything else while everybody was dropping it. But then at the same time was taking all their stim packs so they can't fight me back anyway in the first place. Because why? Because stim packs are actually useful now when you actually drop them. So you keep spawning at that train station. You keep doing that. But at the same time, there is no balance. They said that they nerfed damage in PvP. No, they didn't. They didn't really nerf anything, really, when it comes to PvP damage. I'm still one-shotting people. I'm still one-shot meleeing people. And if you're pure build at the same time, you're still going to one-shot melee people. It's, it's laughable that they even put this out there and they said for balance. There is no balance. There is no anything. It's still one shot, two shot, maybe three shot killing players. But at the same time, if you have Assassin Sentinel, Assassin's Cavalier, you are going to die less. But you're still going to die if you get yourself out of spec mode. When you're in Assassin Sentinel, you need to be jumping in place. But at the same time, you can die if somebody has something powerful enough and they're OP enough. This has happened to me a few times during a live stream. Again, you're not invulnerable. Half of it is that you have to shoot first before that other person shoots. Again, it's just collecting at <laughs> the end of the day. And then people are just like, oh yeah, you just freaking suck and you do all this stuff and you are invisible. But at the same time, that's the meta. You're literally going to just have a bunch of just stealth boys because apparently stealth boys threes don't work and they just do a wonky animation like you're picking something off the ground. Don't get stealth boy threes, just get stealth boys. They work better, you can use the perk card. I only have perk card two when I was doing most of the, what I was doing in the live stream. But again, it's really bad. Just make sure for that. Is it worth the 20% bonus XP? Hell no, it is not worth a 20% bonus XP because you have a few other stipulations that you have to look into. One, you have to make sure that you are going around and you're making sure that you are okay. Two, you got to make sure that you're not on the top three leaderboard because as soon as you're on the top three leaderboard, somebody's hunting your ass and your whole experience, including a lot of your aid items, almost everybody that I killed drop massive amounts of aid items. Don't carry anything at all when it comes to your aid. If you want to carry a fuck ton of stuff, this is not the place to do it. Do not carry any aid whatsoever besides like what you need in order to do PvP because it's going to be gone. A lot of it does drop. Like I've had stacks of 60 drop. I had stacks of like 80 drop, 100. I got like I think 600 candy from somebody as well. And then at the same time, I got like 20 things of like different brews from the DLC because people have just been harboring all the aid. 
I just don't care for the AIDS section anymore, besides Nuka Shine and a few other things. And even then, I lost some Nuka Shine at that point. In the, I had two, and then I lost one. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to collect Nuka Quantums. I'm going to get some things for people. And then there were some times where I was getting stacks of 13 Nuka Quantums, 14 Nuka Quantums, 30 stacks of Nuka Quantums from people. And it's just so crazy. The amount of stuff that you're getting... When it comes to this and legendary rewards on top of it, I don't even know how to even collect them. But I was just literally killing so many people that I was just like, all right. So I almost filled up this character with caps and I had fun doing it by just killing everybody on the server over and over again. And at the end of it, I had just a squad, a squad all in my build oh, no, is literally the most overpowered thing that you can possibly do in Fallout 76. One, so they can't respawn out. back. Yeah. Two, if you're at a train station and they want to try to get back to you, they're just going to keep killing you over and over again at the train station. And if you're dumb enough to just keep going on the train station over and over again, then that's your fault. I can't help it. Don't go to the train station. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you during this video. Don't go to the train station if you die at the train station. You're going to lose more shit. You're going to get mad. And you're not going to be able to win. Plain and simple. Yeah, there was one to two guys that were really OP and had pure builds throughout that seven hour experience that I had. And you know what I did? I tried to get him maybe two to three times and I'm like, oof, I shouldn't do this anymore because I lost a thousand caps. And I went to another server and then I killed more people that weren't in spec. Again, those people that are in spec, that are in PvP mode, they're going to know what to do to fight you. They're going to know how to fight you, okay? It's not going to be worth it if you know what to do. Again, if you're invisible and you can invis melee people, great. You have the spec for it, right? You're good, okay. But for everybody else that is in different builds and they're not pure builds, you're going to get hurt and you're going to lose a lot. And you're only going to make them wealthier at the end of the day. Okay. If you guys like this video, please leave it for like, leave a comment down below. And this is really broken. So I expect to see a hot fix pretty soon. And if you really like my stuff, there's a Patreon down below as well. Join my Discord, just like I try to say as much as I can because... We can stop spreading misinformation and we can literally just tell everybody facts as best as we can, especially for this, okay? Don't go to the train station if you die. Have a good one, guys.